We've got a couple of great presentations tonight. I do want to give Adam just a second, though. I'm very thankful to Stack for hosting us tonight. It's amazing to find free space for us all to get together uh, in Manhattan. It's not easy to do. So thank you to Stack. Thanks, Michael. All right, quick show of hands. Who here has heard of Stack Overflow? All right. Quick show of hands, how many of you have copy and pasted code off of Stack Overflow without attribution? I'm kidding. Uh, so for many, of the, uh, for many of you who don't know, Stack Overflow is also a developer hiring platform. So if you're a developer looking for a job, you can go to stackoverflow.com slash jobs. And if you are looking to hire developers, you can go to stackoverflowbusiness.com slash talent. Thanks. Cool. So tonight we have uh, the team from CoinDash here in New York to present. I'm excited for that. I will get right that right away. And then after that, Alec Alex, Alexei, uh, Block Notary, Alex. I'm sorry, Igor. <laughs> I've, I've got, I, where was Alexei? Right here. I'm, <laughs> Igor from Block Notary will speak. But, all right, hello. Hey, everyone. It's good to be here. So uh, my name is Alan, I'm the CEO of Coindash. Uh, I've been in the space for around five years now. I started as a developer, I contributed code to most of the open source projects you, you all uh, probably know, maybe know. Uh, developed my own wallet along the way and now uh, Coindash. Uh, and so just a kind of a quick survey, who knows about blockchain obviously, everyone who holds any crypto assets? Cool. Who holds any non-Bitcoin assets? Cool. Who ever, who knows what an ICO is? Who ever participated in an ICO? Right. Okay. So most of you never heard of about an ICO, never participated in an ICO, uh, which is good. And this is why we, we are here. And uh, hopefully my presentation is not that bad. So uh, we'll actually show you a, a quick video about Coindash. Uh, we haven't shown it to anybody. We just finished it, uh, kind of finished it today. So you guys will be the judges. So if it sucks, tell us. Uh, if it's good, tell us. Uh, here we go. Technology is creation of new crypto assets. Crypto markets today include hundreds of cryptocurrencies as well as financial instruments such as Melonport and Iconomy. Investing, managing, and interacting with crypto assets is a challenge, especially for inexperienced traders. As a result, the industry is losing countless of potential investors each year. Enter Coindash, an operating system for crypto assets designed to help you easily create and maintain a winning portfolio of cryptocurrencies. Coindash can track all your investments on the blockchain and present you with insights about your portfolio and trading decisions. Our social network enables you to learn about this complicated market by viewing other traders' portfolio and get real-time trading information. Coindash also allows you to automatically copy top traders' investments. All you have to do is pick a top trader, choose an amount, and go. Best of all, you can earn Coindash tokens if other users decide to view and copy your investment strategy. Coindash, start managing your own crypto portfolio in a simple, interactive, and collaborative environment. Is that bad? So, show of hands, who will give it one out of five? One is bad. One is, is we need to throw it away. Three out of five? Well, okay. Four out of five? Five out of five? We haven't voted. I mean, there's no numbers after that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, uh, thanks. Uh, that was uh, kind of, that's it. Um, okay. So, Let's kind of start and I'll give you a bit of context uh, where we're coming from, what the problem is uh, we're actually trying to solve um, and kind of what our vision uh, towards the future of, of blockchain and, and in particular the investment side of, of blockchain. Um, all of the team is, is veterans in the blockchain space. All of us uh, trade 
So it's kind of based on our experience and uh, what we think should be done. So uh, the market itself, it's pretty huge. Everyone, is know, everyone knows about it. Uh, some numbers. Uh, it's currently at around $80 billion market cap. Um, it's huge. I mean, beginning of this year, it was less than half, okay? Um, a thousand percent more than uh, 2014. Uh, the, like, the, the bigger numbers are actually the trading volumes, which are going through the roof. It's between two and five billion dollars a day. Uh, more than 3,000 percent than 2013, 2014. Uh, it's really, really going crazy. But the, the underlying kind of trend is, is that uh, the altcoins are winning, right? Three years ago, Bitcoin was 95% of the total market cap. Today, it's less than 50. Uh, and, and the rest is, are all the other altcoins. That's why I asked you if you're holding anything else than Bitcoin. Um, and it's, it's really incredible. It's, and it's not because Bitcoin is getting any slower, right? Bitcoin is getting up, uh, the volume, the, uh, the price, but the altcoins represent something else, something kind of a trend, a new, a new way of, of uh, or a new asset class, essentially. Um, one of the things that pushes the whole kind of creating this, this whole thing are initial coin offerings, which are the ICOs of, uh, themselves. It's kind of a mechanism to enter and introduce new assets uh, and uh, finance blockchain uh, companies. I can tell you from kind of my personal uh, perspective that blockchain companies do not, let's say, maybe do seed rounds with equity, but other than seed rounds, small seed rounds, uh, all of their investment, all of their investment rounds are not equity based, uh, which is a completely whole kind of uh, system for them, um, and and that's why kind of the ICOs are pushing it towards it. Uh, 2016, the whole kind of ICO market was around 300 million dollars. Q1 of 2017, we are at 300 million dollars. Okay, so we're expecting to quadruple. Uh, this year, uh, which is uh, which are incredible numbers, um, but not all is kind of green. Uh, those are just some of the last ones. I mean, it, uh, Aragon was uh, the last one, twenty-five million dollars. It's just a matter of I think it was two minutes. Um, incredible numbers. Uh, companies raising millions of dollars uh, from the public, uh, but not all is kind of green. It's really really hard to get into the, uh, to the ecosystem. This is why most of you uh, are holding crypto assets but never actually went and, and bought an ICO. Although the, the, the returns are incredible, although the, you, you have the chance to participate in technology, it's just too hard. Just too hard to decide what to invest, when to invest. Um, and, and, and that's a problem because it's, uh, it's uh, kind of an industry looking to expand itself, but it is, on the other hand, losing hundreds of thousands of people just because of the lack of tools. Uh, newcomers, and not even newcomers, uh, people already holding crypto assets, finding really hard to understand what to do next. Should I buy? Should I hold? Um, and that creates a real, real problem. And that's kind of what, what we at Coindish are trying, trying to solve. So uh, the Coindish solution starts with the basics, portfolio management. I don't know how you guys are handling your portfolio, but us, we handle it with Excel sheets, which is uh, actually terrible. I mean, it's not efficient. Uh, it doesn't give you the real kind of uh, feedback you need as an investor. How good am I doing against the market? Um, and so those are the basic tools every investor outside the blockchain space is kind of used to. Um, but inside the blockchain space, we're kind of in the middle ages. And so that's kind of the base layer we, we, we need to start with. It's also the base, it's also the layer on which we can build uh, one of our key features, which is social trading. It's essentially the ability to follow someone and copy his investments. And the reason why we approach it from the social side is, well, there are various reasons. One of which is uh, social uh, trading is very, very kind of social driven, right? You, you talk with friends, uh, you brag about your successes, never tell about your losses, but also uh, decide how to invest based on tips you get. Um, so the social aspect is really, really strong. Uh, but if you don't have that social circle, it's really hard to understand what to invest in. So social trading for us is a way to really uh, remove the friction for newcomers and inexperienced people. If, I, if they can follow a top trader, uh, that can be their ticket into, into the ecosystem, uh, start their first investment and move from there. Uh, and it really kind of connects with the with a worldwide trend of financial independence. A lot of people decide to invest some of their money by themselves or all of their money by themselves. And, and blockchain kind of really complements that, but we need to have the right tools. And so uh, once you do gain some experience, the, the, the ultimate vision of Coindash is kind of a, be a marketplace where you can discover new investment opportunities, you can measure uh, those investment opportunities and you can actually 
directly from Coindesh invest in them. Um, and so uh, it can be third-party investment instrument. ICOs is, by the way, just the beginning of, in, of the investment instruments for the blockchain age. We're already seeing a second wave of, of investment instruments like Economy or Melonport, DAS, uh, even today, uh, Shapeshift announced a new investment instrument. So all of those investment instruments are coming into the market, making it more complex, making it more uh, uh, um, creating the, a steeper learning curve for everyone else. And so we need those tools. But once you gain the, that experience, you do want to have a marketplace where you can discover those tools. And so that's kind of the ultimate vision of, of what we envision uh, Coindesh uh, should be in the future. Uh, obviously, everything I said uh, in the spirits kind of, of the blockchain space and, and open source, it will be open source and, 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 and developers can contribute to it. And that's why we put the developers as a kind of a fourth leg here um, at, at our solution. So uh, the underlying kind of blockchains we're connecting, connecting to, so we're kind of a, a blockchain agnostic. So wherever there is creation of new assets and trading, uh, we want to we wanna integrate with. So we started with Ethereum. We actually did an integration with Rootstock. Anyone know them? So Rootstock essentially built, want to bring the whole technology stack of Ethereum on top of Bitcoin, which is a huge promise to anyone uh, who holds Bitcoins or wants to hold Bitcoins. Uh, so we did an integration with them as well. But looking into the future we'll do the same with polkadot and any other blockchain or cross blockchain platform that will come so this is kind of important and and from the you know make sure we we know how to do this from the ground up um so kind of the key difference is the problem with the, the space is it, there's a lot of vacuum right uh we're kind of the pioneers in in what we're trying to do uh, a lot of the others like economy melonport tried maybe to do Kind of the same thing but i think they're more of an investment instrument uh simply because they answer the question how should i invest technically right um we try to uh, answer the question how we sh what you should invest in and when uh, which are completely different kind of scopes and, and objectives um and so we are kind of alone there uh, and it's not unusual in the space because again it's a new space everyone is developing something new um, and so uh, kind of the landscape of where we are uh, uh, just, I mean, uh, how we make money, well, hopefully we'll have more, many users, but uh, essentially uh, Coindish is around the idea that uh, in experience users transfer their knowledge and expertise or lend their uh, knowledge and expertise to others who don't have them. And so obviously they need to be compensated. Uh, and so that's part of the reason uh, why there's a, a really sophisticated fee structure around uh, various features which, which have uh, any, any financial benefit to the, to the people who use them. Um, and so that kind of created also an ecosystem of people who need to buy the coin, need to uh, sell the coin and so on. Um, and so the fee structure is really an integral part of what we're doing. Uh, so that's kind of the overview, right? Uh, where we had in kind of the high level vision. So where kind of uh, we 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 we're developing the first use cases. So the first use case um, will be will be consistent of several parts. First of all, it's portfolio management, as we as we mentioned, portfolio management for uh, Ethereum. It's being tested right now uh, by our community. Uh, we're getting really great feedbacks. Uh, really uh, a ton of bugs we need to solve, but. I mean, uh, it's a necessary tool everyone needs. Throw away the Excel sheets, start using uh, tools that are actually giving you and, and, and value and understanding of where, where, what you're doing as, a, as an investor. Um, on top of that, we build a social layer where you can actually see other investors uh, and, and start following them. Uh, again, the social aspect is extremely important. And uh, we're also adding a copy ICO feature, which means that you will be able to follow someone and copy automatically through a smart contract their ICO investments. And again, it's all there to remove friction because ICOs are one of the biggest drivers of this economy or, or, or industry. Uh, we want to remove friction. Deciding which ICO to invest in, especially in 2017, 2018, will become much, much harder. And so uh, we need to build tools for newcomers um, to really ease that transition. And so copy ICO for us is the embodiment of, of, that, of that kind of problem and, and solution. If we can provide that solution, I think much more people can actually enjoy uh, the fruits of, of, of the ICO market and, and the crypto market. Uh, by the way, this is all be the, the whole kind of this is the beta program which will be open source uh, for the for our ICO um, and obviously open to the public. So this is kind of a scale where we at. We started around six months ago. 
um, at around, I think, November 2016, uh, kind of the first thing we did as a company or as an entity who wants to develop something, we participated in the EtherCamp Hackathon. Anyone heard about it? So EtherCamp Hackathon was a huge hackathon, seven, seven weeks long. Uh, it was an online hackathon, which a huge prize on it, 7,000 ethers, which in today's money is shitload of money. Um, uh, more than 70 projects, uh, all the industry leaders were uh, actually the judges, uh, and, uh, and we won that hackathon. That was kind of the first thing we did um, as a company, uh, or it wasn't even a company yet, it was kind of a, a dream we wanted to do, uh, that gave us a huge validation that what we're doing is actually important for someone, uh, and from that actually Coindash was born. Um, that was at the beginning of this year, uh, until now we've obviously raised our seed round, and a bunch more and running towards an ICO, which will happen in July, where we uh, uh, secure some funds for future development and creating a, a really strong community around uh, our product. So this is for the ICO. Anyone uh, wants to participate, you can come to us later. We'll give you all the, result, the, all the answers. Uh, generally speaking, we'll be selling 50% of the tokens, 30 will remain for the company and 20 for the early investors and uh, team. Uh, a few words about our, about our partners. Well, first of all, you can see that there are kind of industry leaders. Uh, we hooked up with a bunch of them because uh, we can, first of all, every partnership we do, uh, we emphasize that it has to have some kind of development around it, right? And uh, we don't simply put logos of, of other companies in, in our site and say they're partners. Uh, every single one of them, we did something with, every single one of them, there's a development program around it. And so, uh, for us, it's a, it's a kind of a fundamental thing because we're kind of a, a tech company. Uh, so I'm Alan. Adam is in the back. Uh, we're childhood friends. Um, grew up together, neighbors, uh, lovers. Um, uh, and some of our advisors, again, people from uh, partners and, and, and so on. Thank you very much. Any, any questions you might have, and uh, that's the time. Well, it's not really on our roadmap, uh, but so, uh, okay, so I'll say it's not on our roadmap, but when it will become relevant, that is when the, you know, the, the, the state or the government will decide how to tax, uh, then I think it will become more relevant and we'll have the ability to do that, yeah. So yeah, we started talking about how blockchain companies are kind of a different animal than regular companies. And so in this space, uh, we usually get funded not from equity, uh, but from creating uh, our own ICO. And so the uh, ICO, uh, generally speaking, serves two, two purposes. One is obviously getting funded. That's, that's the fundamental that's given. The second thing is it's the best way for a startup company to create and bootstrap a community around it. Because, and, and specifically speaking in Coindash's kind of situation, our end users are also our investors, right? And so this is, the, I have experience with it, with the last company I've worked with. It's, it's amazing feeling to have, you know, 300, 400 people testing your product from day one, just because they have the biggest incentive to do so because, well, they're invested in your company, right? And so uh, that's a, kind of the two reasons why you should do an ICO. Um, yeah. Uh, no, uh, what we've <laughs> what we've shown here, it's kind of the thing we've uh, until now published. Uh, we can do it one on one, but I don't want to do it in public. We'll we'll, we'll obviously announce everything in uh, in due time, but uh, not now. Perfect. Thank you, guys.
Hello. <clears throat> Hi guys, my name is Igor. I'm, um, I have a company called Black Notary. So we started uh, to work in, um, in this space when I finished Blockchain University. The, not a university, but it's some type of uh, professional education for blockchain developers. And it was in 2015. And I created my course project, um, you know, application to timestamp files inside a public blockchain. And um, yeah, it was my first experience. And after that, we created several you know, blockchain-enabled uh, mobile applications. And um, we have several customers and uh, customers uh, using these uh, applications uh, you know, to, for remote identity verification, you know, taking statements from people. And um, we provide um, so-called uh, blockchain-enabling legislation. So actually, we work with the uh, state of Vermont and uh, uh, every record created uh, in our app um, recognizable uh, in a court uh, or um, arbitration in Vermont. So a um, few months ago, we started to think how can we you know, utilize what we are doing and uh, we figure out that um, um, there is a, there is a, on one hand, there is a very interesting uh, new type of uh, technology which happened in Ethereum recently uh, called uh, proof of authority type of consensus and uh, on other hand uh, you know the price skyrocketing so for m more and more developers it's it's much harder to create a smart contracts and uh, you know many applications you thought about before now it's not very feasible on the public blockchain so let's say if you want to hash and something in, in a public ethereum blockchain every day it's more and more expensive so we started to think, is it, is it possible to create uh, you know, a fork of Ethereum blockchain? And uh, here are our, our project born. Um, that I, will, I will explain about this. So it's, uh, it's called Notary Coin. It's an open Ethereum network. So it means uh, interfaces of this network is public and anyone can participate in this network. Uh, but uh, with a different uh, consensus algorithm, so uh, in the uh, Ethereum public network, we have proof of work, and um, in the uh, Ethereum test nets, we have proof of authority. So we decided to run this uh, uh, with new, new network with proof of authority for open network. And um, what is proof of authority? So in this type of networks, uh, con uh, <clears throat> author authorized signers create new blocks. It's very easy. They just have their keys, you know, and they sign blocks. And um, you know the biggest problem with this type of networks is uh, you know how how you select authorities. So let's say if I and my friend will create this network, you know third party will not trust us. And actually that's what Satoshi solved, you know, and the other networks which followed this proof of work thing. But now uh, we think it's possible to try again uh, to create this uh, you know independent group of uh, authorities where each authority will be independent from each other. So we started to think, you know, who can be this type of authorities? Probably, well, the first uh, solution was, you know, like banks, because bank equal trust for, for, for a lot of us. And actually we spoke with several, several banks and even they have uh, pilots with this type of uh, networks. They don't want to participate in creating new coins, creating liquidity, uh, going against regulations. So it was not a good idea for them. So uh, let's think about, you know, companies. Uh, company structure is um, for some companies it's it's easy to check uh, you know ownership or you know or who is who in this company, uh, but for many companies it's not that it's not that clear. Um, so we started to think about individuals, and um, uh, there are a lot of type of profession which requires some you know to be publicly verifiable. Think about pilots, doctors, lawyers, tax preparers, architects, but. If I try to ask, uh, let's say, architect or pilot to create new coins and new network, probably it will be not that easy if I ask the same question, a person you know, who is uh, much less educated and um, um, much more interesting in, in, in getting additional money. So we started to think about notaries because actually the unique situation uh, here in the United States is that uh, notaries are, you know, less paid professionals here. So if you think about uh, you know, salary, uh, you can make much more you know, working in McDonald's than working as notary full day. And um, 
And also there are about four to five million uh, notaries. And uh, so it's a, it's a broad category. And also the good thing is that uh, it's very easy to, to, to be a notary if you are, if you, if you are interested in this. Um, so, uh, so why notaries? Um, so the good thing about them is that uh, by definition, the private actors on public duty. So there are independent parties, but they perform some uh, public duty for, for all of us. And uh, well, as far as we know, you know, the uh, public officers constituted by law. So it's very, it's very easy to, uh, to verify that they are citizens or permanent residents uh, of the United States. And uh, in most states, you have to, uh, well, uh, notaries cannot have any criminal records. In some states, uh, it's possible to have, let's say, violent rec criminal records, but not possible to have fraudulent uh, criminal records. So that's, uh, that's a good idea to be a validator in the network. And also, as a notary, you have to reside in some, in some state, and in some states, you have to reside in a county. Uh, so it means we have proof of authority and uh, because they're a citizen and we know their identity, we can ask them to sign you know, some type of non-affiliation agreement between them, which can be enforceable. And um, it's, it's also possible to create a type of agreement where a group of people sign some type of agreement with network. So other party in this agreement is a network, it's not, without, you know, not a company. And if you want to participate in this network, you have to uh, comply with uh, these rules. Um, so think about this, uh, let's say if this network is working, we have, you know, some blocks and each block attributed by a real person and you can get the identity of this person and, uh, you know, uh, you, can ask, uh, you can ask this person when you set up this network uh, to follow some rules. Let's say in a public Ethereum network there's a problem that uh, it's totally possible to block some types of transactions. If you remember situation with DAO last year, one of the solutions to prevent hacker from spending funds before hard fork was to block him, block him on network level uh, on major exchanges. So it means uh, one day uh, someone probably will try to block someone else's transaction and next day your transaction. So this is, this is uh, disadvantage of uh, public networks for some type of services, let's say governmental services, you know, because uh, if you put a smart contract of a governmental smart contract, I don't know, IRS smart contract, someone will, may try to block transaction to this contract. Also because, um, yeah, so um, what's uh, in, the, in, the, in the current situation in Ethereum, um, we had uh, four uh, test networks. So first network, more than started uh, in 15, stopped in 16. So it was bloated by a lot of transactions and we had some consensus issues between Parity and Go Ethereum client. So it stopped to work. After that, uh, uh, um, foundation set it up Robson uh, network and it worked until February 2017. And after someone overmined uh, uh, the consensus algorithm, uh, um, you know, they bloated uh, this network also. So they, uh, well, actually that network uh, didn't work for, for a while. So um, Ethereum developers decided to, to build a new network and uh, two different teams created two different uh, type of networks. And the uh, interesting thing here is they are not compatible. So Kovan, uh, created by Parity team is not compatible with Rinkeby, uh, created by Go Ethereum team. So we have one main network with one consensus algorithm and two test networks with uh, each, each of uh, those networks uh, has its own uh, consensus algorithm, not compatible with each other. So why not to create one more network or two or three or five? And it's totally possible. And if, if you think about uh, you know, blockchain explorer and look into either scan, you can see like select a, a network. And if a person is not familiar with Ethereum, he sees like four networks and uh, you know, which one should I use? It's a question. So why, if you have four networks, why not to add one more or five more? And also I think here's a possibility for, you know, for Ethereum community to build new networks 
and also it will be very good for um, um, for, for the future of Ethereum. So, um, so what can be a benefit of uh, this network with uh, known um, uh, with known miners? So first of all, we don't have any uh, proof of authority network with value because test nets. Uh, um, well, you can get free coins uh, with uh, um, from from it, and uh, you cannot sell these coins, so there is no value. And actually, we don't know if uh, this network is secured by those miners or just set it up. Because now, if if it's secured and someone can steal money from it, it means uh, and if if uh, it, it didn't happen by you know problems with consensus, uh, it means that uh, this network is secure. But uh, if this network ha has no value, it means that uh, we, we should put some value to prove this. So um, this, uh, because this mining um, doesn't require any computational uh, thing, so it's, it's very green mining. So you can set up this type of network very quickly. So the problem to select uh, authorities is much, much harder than to select uh, uh, and to you know, uh, set up this network. Uh, and continuous voting. So what do I mean by this? Uh, in, um, when you set up this type of network, you have to, um, you have to add or remove new, new miners. Let's say if you have notaries as uh, authorized parties, they have expiration date in their license. And when their license will expire, we have to remove them from this uh, consensus and add them back uh, when they will renew this license. So how to do this? Let's say, uh, if I am uh, a super node in this network, I can add or remove new validators by myself, but it will not be very trustful. So uh, all, uh, all participants are equal parties. So if they need to add or remove uh, someone else, uh, they should vote. And we don't, um, and we don't have such a process in, uh, in open Ethereum network where voting is a part of a consensus mechanism. So it also can be a very interesting experiment. Uh, next thing is uh, that if we if we want to create hard fork, and we know all parties participated in this decision because hard fork uh, uh, will be uh, will be approved by all validators, we can legally recognize hard fork decision. And if someone um, doesn't like this decision, he can go to a trial against uh, this group of validators, and it's totally possible. You know. If you don't like something, you can go to court against uh, a person, a company, uh, a state, a government, but you cannot go to court against uh, any public uh, networks. And uh, in some situations it's good, but in some situations probably uh, some type of contracts will require this type of uh, uh, stability inside, uh, inside the network. So uh, what I think uh, is that proof of authority is viable uh, mechanism and uh, uh, state or governmental level networks will be based on this hybrid uh, hybrid system where you know there is a private part and public part. Think about website, let's say uh, IRS website. You, it's publicly available. You can submit some forms. You can authenticate yourself, but the database of this uh, uh, website is located on uh, their um, their part, and you don't have access key to uh, decisions to change or modify this website. So, with uh, this hybrid, with with these hybrid networks, it will be possible to have uh, open interfaces to the system, so anyone can participate, you know, exchange tokens. And um, uh, but miners will protect uh, main mechanism of consensus. So the main thing they will protect is that uh, they will accept all transactions and they will create blocks, and that's it. So it can be a very interesting legal experiment. Uh, so actually, what we're bringing you to this um, um, to this type of uh, system? So we're, we're developing several D apps, decentralized apps. So first of all, it's called Ceremony. So we have to distribute keys between miners, and it's a uh, it's a new type of problem. Um, so let's say I generate you know multiple keys, and I have to distribute it uh, across uh, all those notaries. So I send them a key, and they change the key into key they know uh, using this decentralized app. Uh, also, uh, the voting app and the reward management app, uh, where they can specify, you know, in 
which account they will receive uh, payouts for their work and um, uh, where they will work, vote for decisions in this network. So also we will change something inside the um, uh, Ethereum client. So we need to add this uh, alternative reward split. So it means that uh, uh, in public Ethereum network, uh, uh, a miner receives some reward for, for when uh, he finds a block, let's say five either plus plus something else, but uh, think about like five either. But in this network, we will split, uh, when the miner creates a block, it will automatically create uh, uh, transactions to all participants, all miners in this network and split uh, reward among them. So this way we can prevent race uh, uh, against each other uh, for a reward inside the system. So if you create two blocks, um, uh, in the, like if, uh, if I create one block, I split reward uh, among all peers. And two blocks, the same thing. So there is no way for me to try to um, attack consensus rules uh, to, to actually try to mine more blocks because I, I will not get more reward from, for this. And just uh, to show you, you know, some screenshots, what we are doing, um, um, just to share how, how we develop these DFs. So any miner will be able to propose new ballot and uh, let's say add or renew, uh, remove uh, a miner from this network. And uh, he has to specify uh, why uh, he, he, he want to remove or add this key, mining key, and, um, and sign this request with his private key. Um, so this is an uh, example of um, uh, initial key distribution. So when a miner receives a key from me, he signs the, this uh, request with a private key using parity trusted signer. And uh, it, it generates, uh, after a few seconds, it generates several, several keys. Um, yeah, so that's basically a, uh, <laughs> All about this network, and um, we started it about uh, um, I don't know, two weeks ago uh, to uh, you know get people around this network, and uh, yeah, I just we just created a simple landing page, you know, like okay, here's an Oricoin, uh, what's what's different, and ask I started to ask people, you know, do you want to participate in this network as miner, and I remember when I had no people at all, I asked my friend, and I said, okay, do you want to participate? Yeah, he said, I don't know why. I said, yeah, you can, you can be a first miner, so you, 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 well, you will, have, you will have like first place on this list. And he said, yeah, that's reasonable. But, uh, <laughs> and uh, well, I said it two weeks. So now um, I decided to, to, to um, start with 12 uh, notaries, because 12 is, you know, magic number or something. And if you think about, uh, public Ethereum network, we have like five pools and uh, actually some of them owned by same people. So we have like two or three group of people's people. And um, if we think about Bitcoin, it's about uh, 20, but uh, uh, well, like six or seven group of people. And uh, here each person is, uh, you know, yeah, independent person. And uh, yeah, this is Roman, the first guy is and um, yeah, so it's, it's an interesting question. He asked it, okay, uh, should, I, uh, should I get notary license? And I said, yeah. And he said, okay, can you pay for it? Like, like <laughs> yeah, I said, no, like, and, um, um, uh, oh no, it's for this other guy. Uh, this guy paid by himself, uh, um, but yeah, he, he paid uh, for this license and uh, he actually passed this exam. You know, he I asked him to explain why he decided to, to, to mine this coin, and his main reason was to make money, you know, because well, it's not, it will not be possible to sell this coin for dollars. But you know, we know all these ways you can sell it for Bitcoin and whatever you want. Um, so he 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 got his notary license, and he 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 works in uh, uh, in Amazon, in Seattle. So he put a uh, that he is doing notary acts. <laughs> For Amazon employees, uh, somewhere on his uh, internal board, so it's maybe it's additional income for him. Yeah, so um, um, you know, people signed up. Uh, for me, the, the main reason was to you know to find some uh, for the first group of people to find some random guys. Like, okay, I, I, I met this uh, 
second guy on uh, New York City Bitcoin meetup. Uh, I presented, presented a little bit and I asked, okay, do you want to participate in this network? I said, yeah, why not? So he got his license by himself. So uh, I never paid for any, any of this license. And in, in some states, let's say in California, it's, it's, not, it's not easy. You have to pass an exam, you have to, you have to scan your fingerprints and, uh, and wait a few months from, for this. But in some states, it's much easier. Let's say in Vermont, you can do it online. So yeah, you can see people, different colors, different genders, different um, social groups. Yeah, but all they're interested in making money. Well, making coins. And actually, uh, today, um, someone, just this one story about, you know, someone just, uh, you know, one guy created this post, like, I am an IT professional, entrepreneur, public notary, you know, and I'm thinking, okay, who is this guy from Texas? I don't know him. I never spoke with him. So someone just found it somewhere, you know, in Google. I don't know how he searched for it. I asked it, but he didn't answer yet. So that's, uh, you know, that's interesting. And uh, what I think, um, this person, this 12th person uh, we start with, uh, I met them you know, at, least, at least once. So it's, it's, it's good initial distribution, but uh, still, uh, you know, people may ask questions. So we will add more notaries, let's say, uh, when we start main network, we will start with 50. And uh, let's say if, if right now, if someone would like to, to join this network, I am asking to put his you know, name on a forum. And, uh, and after that, uh, I will put it in a smart contract with some um, you know, priority. Yeah, sure. <laughs> there is no company. It's a, it's a, there is no company. So this network owned by notaries. So let's say if you participate in this network, you have to keep your node like a server online. And I give you a key and I give key to 12 more people. And you start this network and this network works for you. And uh, each block uh, you create, you split the reward, let's say five notary coin ethers uh, between all online miners, like your peers. But other people can create their own node, but they cannot mine because they're not authorized. You started this network, so it's your network. But you have, to, you have to mine block and accept transactions. And if you don't mine block or you block some transactions, other participants of this network or other miners of these networks can vote against you and remove you from, from a list of nodes. So that's... Uh, that's Uh, well, it's uh, it's one way, you know. Uh, one way, let's say, um, um, yeah, you can you can remove all peer peers, but you know, if you're only one peer in this network, uh, probably other third party will not trust in your network. So, when you think when we think about notaries, we think about um, stability. You know? So we don't we don't want them to to do something we do not expect. So. But I think people will just, like notaries, they will just run this node, forget about this. And that's why uh, we built, um, where is this? One second. If, if you remember this slide, uh, that's why we have uh, three different keys. So with one key, it's mining key. You put it on this virtual machine and you don't touch this virtual machine. It updates itself, you know, like, security updates. And uh, with Parity Client, it can update uh, Parity code on this machine from, from smart contract. And uh, payout key, it's like wallet key. So this key you use to send money from, um, from your reward to an exchange. And uh, you know, in some exchange, let's say in Bittrex, you can, uh, you can when you send some altcoins, you can automatically sell these coins to Bitcoin or Ethereum. And with voting key, you, you vote for these decisions. So that's easy. And I think um, uh, this is one model, but people will try different, will try different models. So I spoke with uh, one company, they're doing um, uh, a casino on uh, Ethereum. 
and uh, it worked well. Uh, well, almost worked well because there's a problem with randomness in uh, in, a, in, a, in a blockchain. But it worked well uh, when price was like ten dollars for one either. But now it's not profitable for low stakes. Um, so they're thinking probably we should create a private network. Yeah, but we will uh, lost some um, some trust into our system from uh, from our players. So why not to create some kind of consortium, but consortium of uh, independent parties with open interfaces. So that's something uh, never tried before, and uh, I think I will try and uh, let's see if people will take this uh, you know results of our work and spin their own networks because what we are doing is eventually. And now it's eventually will be open sourced, so it's um, um, it's open source project, and uh, with uh, no restriction, you can use this code to create your network or participate in this network. So, guys, uh, any more question? No. Okay. So your question. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, right now it's uh, it, because it's a fork of Ethereum. It will be the same supply model. Well, no uncles, but uh, almost the same. So a miner will get uh, uh, either for, um, um, for each block, and also all uh, all all spent uh, gas in this network. Yeah. So well, there is a problem of initial liquidity, and. Uh, that's a that's a that's a that's that's a question I don't know how to how to answer how to answer because well it's possible to make an ICO and bring some liquidity into the system but uh, because all parties are identified and citizens or residents of the United States they can get a question you know why did you participate in this type of network where someone um, you know, created an ICO on this so it's a it's a question uh, it's open question. And uh, but there are several other ways you know, without ICO. So you can you can pre-mine some coins, and uh, because there is some governance uh, of uh, miners, you can you can propose how to spend this uh, pre-mined token. But you cannot spend you know, more than I don't know, one twelve each month. And um, yeah, and usually you can spend it on like you can you can give ability uh, to spend different ways. So let's say uh, all miners can vote, send all tokens to foundation, or send all tokens to um, recycle bin. Like, it's, it's also possible. Because if you create this network, and I'm like your provider of software, and I'm not doing this uh, um, my job, miners will may decide not to pay me uh, founders rewards. So it's also a model of, for governance. Maybe you have any basic questions about Ethereum? <laughs> no? Okay, guys, thank you.